And one, one story you must read in the book before you go, because it is one of my touching stories. There, there was a theatrical actress named Geraldine Page. Didn't make very many movies. So her big movie was uh, A Trip to the Bountiful, which she won Best Actress for, and won the, actor, uh, the Oscar for Best Actress. And uh, she played herself. She won the Oscar for playing herself. And it, when I watched that movie, it's, it's Geraldine. It's, it's the woman I knew 40 years, you know. Her movements, her gestures, the way she did the, you know, just things she did to occupy her hands when she was talking to you. I kept thinking, isn't it amazing? Your whole life Hollywood didn't recognize you. Now you're walking away with the Oscar because you played yourself. <laughs> Great gone, girl. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and she was that type of person. And we became, I met her in 66 first when I was 14 years old. She actually took, first person ever took me into her dressing room. And here I was in a star's dressing room with the flowers and the, and the drink cart and all the telegrams. I mean, what you see in the movies, I, I was standing there. Yeah, all these brushes with makeup on. And she was old theater. So she believed, she was sitting there in full stage makeup, which is exaggerated, so it looks like a drag queen. There's a superstition if you put red dots in your in corners of your eyes, it separates your eyes. So if you're sitting out in the audience, it makes your face look wider. Whereas if you don't have that, it, your face looks smaller. Old theatrical trick, but she would still use it. So she'd have these red dots there. I just love this woman. And then I was fortunate enough to work on two independent films as somebody that was the grafter brought the camera or something you know whenever they would film something local I would try to get on that and it was her twice so one time I was actually this was so independent they actually had a microphone on the end of a fishing rod to get the sound I mean, this was really budgeted and Geraldine starred in it and um, I was her double uh, that they would set up the lights and the sound of me and then she would step in because we were the same height so half the time we were just sitting around talking about Paul Newman and Tennessee Williams and all these people she, she knew and I knew. And, uh, and um, of course, every time she went to see a, I mean, did theater, I would go to see her. I mean, of course. And she always said, Gary, what do you do with all these pictures? My God, you must have thousands of pictures of me. You have more pictures of me in outfits that I don't even remember I have anymore if I have them. And she said, why don't you ever get me prints of these? And I thought, because back then with film, if I got a print every time somebody would ask me for a print, Christ, I'd be at the lab 24-7 because everybody, oh, could I have a print of that? Could I have a print of that? <sighs> yeah, you can, but I, you know, I got to remember. It ends up that um, one, one year, five of my friends, I decided I was going to go through my whole life of negatives, everything, everything. I held each one up to the light every strip and I made five albums for my five best friends that I grew up with of us growing up together and then through star ones and I thought well while I'm going through my whole life I might as well pick out the Geraldine Page pictures and make her an album so I made her an album and then I kept thinking oh wow I forgot about that you know because you know you see somebody so often you don't remember when you last saw them oh wow wow so it ends up that she was touring in a play at the time with Richard Chamberlain Blythe Danner and Judith Ivey called Blythe Spirit by Noel Coward and I had seen her in Baltimore do it, and she looked a little weathered like she was tired, and then I went to New York and I saw her, and I had the album with me, and it was a matinee, and I thought, I'm gonna to go to the matinee, because I had tickets to the evening show, and I want her to be able to look through it, so by the end of the evening, we can discuss the album and talk about it. I wanted her to be all jazz. So I come, and in, in theater usually, if you're later than a half hour, you're docked pay. So say a play starts at eight o'clock, you've got to be in that theater by 7.30 or everybody starts panicking. Do we call the understudy? Where in the hell's the star? Well, this is one of the days she wasn't showing. She wasn't showing, she wasn't showing. And the doorman was a wreck and you know, they didn't know what to do. So I thought, I don't want to add to it because at this point she's going to have to run. When she comes, she's running late, she's running. So I left. And the guy said, come back afterwards, you know, she'll see you, you know, you're friends, okay. So I went, I killed two hours. I came back, photo album in hand. I go to the door and he says, oh, okay, Gary, now wait a minute. And he goes upstairs and he comes down and he brings this guy downstairs. I'd never met, he said, hi, Gary, we've never met, but I've heard a lot about you. I'm Geraldine's manager. And um, he says, <laughs> he said, we found her dead today. Uh, and it, it, <laughs> in her chair. She had died in her sleep. And uh, when they went to her apartment, she had passed away. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 
but I'm standing there with this whole my history of the life with her, and uh, she never got to see it. <laughs> moment. Sorry about that. That you know, just always touches me because she is one of them that allowed me to cross over into that world and talk about Paul Newman and his barbecues and laugh and joke and you know these were real they were her friends and to me they were still movie stars I photographed and it's like oh wow you know I was still in the old wow stage you know so she was a good good friend <laughs> And need to say miss her greatly because I mean, you know, I, I passed so many theaters. I was just in New York before I came here, and there was a, a, a play called Jerusalem at the play where she at the theater where she normally started. at. So I was standing at that same stage door, and of course this shit flashes. You know, 40 years of standing at these doors flash in my head all the time. Who I seen come out of this door in 40 years? Every time I stand at a different stage door, and, and, and um, it's funny because right now Daniel Radcliffe's on Broadway also, and of course he's got all the Harry Potter fans and it's all crazy but hell I was there when Elizabeth Taylor came out of that door and you couldn't get down the street you know now it's Harry Potter <laughs> so <laughs> crazy times oh, sorry about that <laughs> but it you know that's what I mean you get so emotional with these people yeah. that it's it's it becomes very very real to you, you know?